It is good to worship with you today. We pray that you would experience God's love and presence with you today and throughout the week. We give thanks for the ways in which you financially contribute to the mission and ministry of Holy Trinity, as well as our weekly food collection. Holy Trinity has a new mission statement, gathered by Christ, growing in faith, sharing God's love. We look forward to the ways this will guide us in our life together. And now we prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to the prelude. We join in confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen.
Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leopard clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around? Though my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me. Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace that where there is hatred, we may so love, where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O Divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spirit that is first, but the physical, 
then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As with the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. As is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and body cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel According to Luke Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also, and from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel reading today is a continuation of the Gospel from last week. Jesus is giving the Sermon on the Plain. Remember, he is right there in the middle of the people. He has been healing and teaching. This is the place where we heard the blessings and the woes. I think it's important to know where the text comes from within the Gospel of Luke because this can help us understand who Jesus is talking to and directing his message to, what he's trying to accomplish. In the sixth chapter of Luke, we find Jesus breaking the rules of the Sabbath. And Jesus says to the complainers, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. And then Jesus is healing on the Sabbath and the Pharisees are highly irritated. And Jesus poses a question to them. Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or destroy it? He goes against the flow of faith. Jesus isn't following the playbook for how one is to operate in the world and in the synagogue. The Pharisees are angry now and trying to figure out what to do about him. And after all of this, Jesus goes up the mountain and spends the night praying. He then gathers his disciples the next morning and selects the 12 who would become his apostles. He comes down the mountain, gives the sermon on the plain to the people gathered. Some were disciples, followers of Jesus. They would be people like us, you and I. And then there's all kinds of curious people who came to hear Jesus and be in his presence for healing. And then Jesus speaks directly to his disciples and explains about who is blessed and who might be missing the mark and relying on themselves too much. And then there's another change in who Jesus is talking to, which is where we begin today. He says, but I say to you that listen. He's not addressing the whole crowd. He knows there are people who don't understand, people who are far too grounded in tradition to be open to Jesus's message, Gentiles and Jews alike, and people who have lost interest or the ability to fully engage. But Jesus says, but I say to you that listen. And then Jesus begins talking about a new way of living in the world, a new perspective for relationships of all kinds. But here's the thing. Jesus is not asking people to abide by new rules. Jesus is inviting people into a completely new world, 
a world that is not about keeping score, competing, hating, paying back, hurt and pain. Jesus is inviting people, you and I, into a world that is about love. And we might wonder, how is this possible given the world we live in? God, are you out of your mind? Have you seen the broken relationships, the brokenness and division among groups of people, and even within your church, people who claim to follow you? And I think the good news and the bad news is that, yes, Jesus is more aware that we are broken and there's division even more than we are aware. And so today we receive yet again an invitation to do to this new world, a new way of living, a new way of relating to people. And I think a question becomes, what does this love that Jesus is talking about look like? And what does this giving and forgiving look like? We know that Jesus is not advocating for people to stay in abusive relationships. That's really important to highlight and remember. So if that's the case, what does this love look like in our lives? Loving those who love us, giving to those who give to us. Treating people well who treat us well, that's easy living. It's easy to care and support people we know and trust will care for and support us. But loving our enemies, treating people who hate me well, praying for people who intentionally hurt me, give more to someone who has already stolen from me. We need a roadmap because this is not intellectual. And I have to wonder with the amount of people who don't love themselves, what does this mean in today's context? How do we hear what Jesus is saying? This is not lofty spiritual advice. This isn't Jesus pontificating and this isn't Jesus giving us another set of rules. This is Jesus inviting people who are following him, you and I, to look at our experiences in and with this world differently. And he is inviting us, you and me, to something brand new. This all sounds backwards because, frankly, to us it is. Loving and forgiving and giving is not how our society functions. And in other gospel accounts, we hear Jesus explicitly say this way of living and following him is hard and there will be people who don't understand and don't want what Jesus is offering and think that this, this way is completely wrong. Jesus knows he will be killed for this. So no, it's not easy, but this is what we're called to wrestle with. This new life, kingdom of God living, doesn't happen like a light switch, though. It happens in small moments. Perhaps it looks like first striving to want to love and want to forgive, because that takes time and energy, too. Perhaps it simply looks like admitting we don't love our enemies and sitting with that for a while. Letting the grip of holding on to the pain go just ever so lightly releasing the the person or the situation from our tight grasp to God to hold and to deal with. If someone wants or needs something, maybe give them more than what they ask for, just a little bit more. And if we can't pray for our enemies, perhaps we ask someone else to pray for them for a while until we're able to do so. Depending upon the relationship or the situation, these small steps might seem like climbing mountains. And that's okay. This is what our life of faith is about. Our new mission statement at Holy Trinity states this perfectly. We're gathered by Christ. Jesus is doing the calling and gathering us. Growing in faith, we continue to learn about this new way and what it means to be disciples and how the kingdom of God is breaking into this world. Continuing to learn about this God who created us and how they are restoring and redeeming us in the whole world. And then sharing God's love loving our enemies, forgiving, doing good to others and lending, expecting nothing in return. And through our sharing of God's love, we are reflecting God and the kingdom of God to others. Love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. For God is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your God is merciful. Amen. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the Church, the world, and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your Church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we have first received mercy. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. God of grace, hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy that we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness men broken relationships, heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness, strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled. God of grace, hear our prayer. You bind us together into one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. God of grace, hear our prayer. We praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom, as you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life. Sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine Everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine Everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Jesus gave it to me I'm gonna let it shine Jesus gave it to me, I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, 
let it shine. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.